Hi there trailer owners. Today we're going to be taking a look at Dexter's 2,000 pound brake kit. These kits come as an assembly for your entire axle so you receive one for both the driver and passenger side. Just want to keep in mind when you're installing them that you got the appropriate side that you're putting on. And this is what our brakes look like when they're installed. We just installed the passenger side because they do vary depending on how the arms are and how the pads need to apply. We have what's called a leading trailing set up here. So our leading pad is our smaller pad and this one has a little bit different friction property than our trailing one here. So it grabs a little bit harder and it actually forces the larger surface area pad here into the drum to do most of the stopping work on this one. So it is important you've got the correct one installed on the correct side to get proper braking. These are rated for 2,000 pounds, so it's perfect for our small pop-up camper here with its smaller axle. It does come with everything that you see here, so you are going to get your shoes and everything's going to be assembled for you so it just slides on. And that's one of the best things ever. If you have ever worked with drum brakes before, you know that these springs in here, they're in there pretty tight under a lot of tension, and there's quite a few of them in there, and getting them out and changing just the shoes can be quite a task. So being able to just slide a whole assembly on and bolt it down greatly minimizes the amount of time you're gonna be out here. So here we have our new assembly here. We're getting ready to slide it on. Your wires are gonna be kind of wrapped around in there. Make sure you get those out because they do need to be on the outside so we can hook them back up. We can take a quick look at our new unit here before we put it on. And we can see we've got nice new shoes on each side. The pads are bonded on them which a bonded pad is gonna be much better, a bonded shoe, because if you have rivets that go through there as the pad wears down, eventually that rivet's going to expose itself and then it can dig into your drum. With it being bonded, you're gonna get the entire meat of that pad life until you get down to the metal here, so you get much more out of it. The magnet down here on the bottom is what applies our brakes when it receives power down the wires. It energizes the magnet, which grabs on our drum, which causes our shoes to extend outward to apply braking. Here at the bottom, we've got our adjustment wheel for adjusting the brakes. Now they are designed to automatically adjust, but with that, with most of the time with these features, they typically only adjust when you're backing up. And if you don't have enough force when you hit the brakes and you back up, it doesn't really adjust. That's just kind of how most drums are. Most drums, the auto adjuster is just not the most reliable thing. So there are, access ports here on the back side so we can get in there and adjust those manually if we ever need to. We're gonna be replacing our brakes on this unit because they're no longer operational. In addition to that, we're gonna be replacing the hub because it's best to replace them both as a pair to ensure you don't have any premature wear from the damage that may have been caused by the previous part. We'll begin our installation by jacking our trailer up so we can rotate the tire. I just used the floor jack on the frame and then put some jack stands under it to hold it up. And we're gonna use our socket to remove all the nuts. We're using a 21 millimeter on this one, but it's gonna vary likely depending on your trailer. Now that we've got all those removed, we can just slide the tire off. So here we've got our old hub. We're gonna start removing this now. I went ahead and set a rag down here because it is gonna get quite messy. There's a lot of wheel bearing grease in here. The cap here on the ends, the first part we need to take off, and we can do this actually just with a rubber mallet. It's kind of Tap it on the side there. Just kind of work it off. Now that we've got it removed, we'll have our nut on the inside with the cotter pin. So we're gonna take off our cotter pin. I like to start with a screwdriver just to get those pushed away a little bit. And then we can take our pliers and bend those down. It's good if you straighten them out just a little bit, it'll make it a little bit easier to get this pin pulled out to get those a little straighter. And a lot of times you can use a smaller screwdriver on top and get it in the little eyelet here at the top and you can pull it out if you can't get it real straight. So this one here, we're having a little bit of difficulties getting it straight just because of the way it's moving in there. So we're just gonna grab a small screwdriver and stick it in that eyelet and we can pull it up from there. So we're just gonna poke our screwdriver in there and you can see you can just kind of pry it out if you're having a difficult time. Want to make sure you save all your parts. We can then remove our nut. I like to use a pair of channel locks because it's not on there very tight. 
and we're just going to grab it and twist it off. Our hub now can slide off, but our outer bearing's right there. So I like to take a screwdriver and just put it here on the edge. And then when I pull out, it'll catch that bearing. And we can see here that it does like some moisture is entered in there. It's got kind of a rusty color to it. It's no longer just your black or red grease that you would normally find in there. So there has been a little bit of moisture intrusion on this one. So we're gonna slide it the rest of the way off now. And this whole assembly here, we can go ahead and just set this aside. We're gonna be replacing this. So now we've got our brakes exposed on the inside so we can start removing those. I recommend getting some of this grease out of the way before you start removing everything though to help minimize the mess. And our bolts that hold our brakes on are actually gonna be found on the other side. Even though we've got these off, these are our studs here. So we're gonna head around to the other side and remove those nuts using an 18 millimeter socket and wrench. For the lower ones, you may find that a socket doesn't really fit in there. So you may need to use a wrench to get these ones off down here. And once your last nut is removed, we have two wires that are still attaching it. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure we cut those. Here's our wires here. We're just gonna cut them on the other side of their connectors here. And now the whole unit will just slide right off and we can set this aside. So now we can take our new assembly here. We're gonna just slide it around. The studs in the back side are gonna poke through the holes in our axle there. And then we'll use the nuts that come included with our new brakes and install those on the back side. Just line up your nuts with those studs and then just reinstall them. They should be the same size as our old ones. So we're gonna tighten them down with our 18 millimeter socket or wrench. Now we can go back and snug these down. Then we can go back and torque our hardware to the specifications found in our instructions. We can now hook up our wiring. So the two that we had cut over here, we're going to strip these back. And we're going to be connecting these using heat shrink butt connectors, which you can purchase here at eTrailer.com. So if you are planning on doing this, you can go ahead and add those to your cart. Now that we got those stripped back, we're going to take the wires from our unit over here and we're going to connect those to them. Now I know those are, you see a white and a blue wire there. It doesn't matter which one you're hooking it to. One needs to be power, one needs to be ground. It doesn't, doesn't matter to the electric brakes which one it is. It'll still magnetize and work properly. So we're just gonna grab one of those wires, slide our heat shrink butt connector on it. We're gonna crimp it down. Then we're gonna come over to one of our other wires. I like to give them a little bit of a twist. It just makes it slide into the butt connector a little easier. Slide that guy up in there and then crimp it down. We'll then repeat this for our other wire. We can then use a heat gun to shrink down our butt connectors. This will keep out any moisture, ensuring a long-lasting connection. Now that we've got our brakes installed, we're going to move over to our hub here. The new hub has the races pre-installed, so we're going to start with our bearings. We're going to go ahead and get those greased up. We're going to use our grease tool here. You can get one like this here at eTrailer.com. And this is gonna make the job go a lot faster. It's much easier to grease them with this than it is by using your hand and smashing the grease down in there. It's a little bit more effective in here and it does help minimize the mess. Now this whole unit here has been pretty heavily used so the amount of mess we're gonna minimize here is probably not as much as you would at home if it wasn't being used regularly in a shop every day. And we're just using wheel bearing grease on this. You can also pick that up here at eTrailer.com. 
So now that we've got our bearing fully packed, we're gonna drop it down in the back side. clean up some of the stuff on our hands and then we can install the seal here on the back side to hold this bearing in place. So now we can put our grease seal in. Now if you're working with grease, it's not a bad idea to wear gloves if you're unsure because some people do report that they have irritation from it. I've been working with it with a long time and I haven't noticed anything but if you have sensitive skin it is something to consider. Our seal here does have an inside and outside. This side's going to go towards the inside towards our bearing. It's at the cavity with our seal. And then here's our outside. It's got the metal surface here on top. It's just gonna drop right down there. And then we're gonna drive it in. The easiest way to drive this in is to just use a block of wood. A two by four works great. So we're just gonna set that on there and then just tap it down. We're trying to do it evenly so it taps down nice and easy, nice and even. And we're just feeling around the edges now. We just want that seal to be flush and it's nice and flush now. So that's fully installed. Our other bearing will need to be packed. So we're gonna go ahead and pack that bearing. And then I also like to take some of the excess grease here and smear it on our axle. Just helps make everything slide together a little bit easier. Just put a little bit around there. Try not to get any on the other side of your grease seal there because we want all this, we don't want any grease getting into where our brakes are. We'll now take our whole assembly here and we're just going to lift it into position. Try to be careful not to nick the seal on your shaft there when you're going on. And that's what we're looking for right there. It should just slide right on. We can then take our other bearing. We want the smaller diameter of the taper to go in this time. And then we can go ahead and clean up our nut and reinstall that. Just get that old grease off there. You don't have to get 100% of it off of there. Just get the bulk of it off of there. And then we'll just snug this guy down. And I'm just gonna tighten this with the channel locks like we did before. And this guy, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna fully tighten it down. I like to rotate the hub as I'm doing this, just to make sure it gets all the way seated. You should feel your hub getting tighter as you get it nice and tight. It's pretty tight right there. And now we wanna back it off. We don't want it to actually be that tight we're just ensuring that our bearings are fully seated. So we're just gonna back it off until it's loose, nice and loose. Because if you remember when we took the, the nut off the first time, the nut wasn't even really that tight to begin with. So we're just gonna turn it until it touches. And then we can reinstall our cotter pin. So now we're just gonna slide our cotter pin down in there. Sometimes you gotta kind of tap it down in there if it's a little beat up. We do have cotter pins available here at eTrailer.com if you want to replace it. In most cases you can just reuse it, it's fine, but they have been, it's an older trailer and it's been maintained several times that cotter pin may be wore out. And we're just going to bend these back towards the center like they were before. We can now take our cap, we're going to just set it in place and our rubber mallet can tap it back on. Sometimes the newer caps here can be a little bit tricky to get them started because you don't want to bend up your cap real hard, tap it on it. So if you take a screwdriver on the outer lip on the side that's kind of sticking out, you can get just one side to start and it usually taps in pretty easily after that. And then at this point, if you had easy lube axles, you would want to fill those up as much as possible. You don't want to have it come all out, but you want to fill it up until you see it coming out of your bearings to ensure that you've got it fully packed. We're just going to be putting ours back on. We don't need to add grease just here inside this cap. That doesn't do us any good. And now we can go ahead and reinstall our tire. 
We're replacing our tires as well. You can get tire and rim assemblies here at eTrailer.com that are pre-balanced. Our old one was dry, rotted, and had some wear on it. So in order to ensure that we're not gonna have any problems, when we go on our next trip, we've got nice new brakes, rims, and tires. tighten down your wheels in a star pattern. Before we torque these, we're going to go ahead and adjust the brakes because we need the trailer to be back on the ground when we torque them, but we need to be able to rotate it to properly adjust our brakes. At the bottom here, the oblong cutout is going to give you access to your adjuster. So we can go ahead and spin this to bring our brake pads out until we've got just a subtle drag. Right now, as we spin it, there's, we feel absolutely no resistance whatsoever. So we're just gonna turn that little star with our screwdriver here. You can just push on one of the little ears of the star to rotate it. They also make brake drum tools that have a little angle to them that work a little bit better than a flat bladed screwdriver but a flat bladed screwdriver will work in most instances. And we've now turned it into the point where we've got just a slight drag on it. Before when we spun it around, you could hear a little bit of noise, but there, you didn't feel any resistance whatsoever. And now when we spin it around, you'll see the tire stops much faster than it was before. And every time it goes around, there's a little spot where there's a very slight amount of resistance and that's our pads touching. And that's where we want it to be because these don't move very much. They need to be close in order to properly apply themselves. So now that we've got this side on and adjusted, the only thing left to do before we lower it down and torque everything is to put the little covers into those oblong holes in the back. So we're just gonna go back and pop these in place. They just push right in. We can then go back and torque our wheels to the manufacturer's specifications. We'll then repeat the same procedures over here on the driver's side. And that completes our look at Dexter's 2,000 pound replacement brake kit.